polyprotic acids. And then we'll uh, introduce that third uh, definition of acids and bases that we briefly mentioned, Lewis acids and bases. So what is a polyprotic acid? All right, so let's just break it down. Poly, what's that mean? Many. Many. So two or more. Or the name of a parrot. Very common name for a bird, pet bird, poly. Could be. Could have something to do with pet birds, but it doesn't. It means, it means more than one, so two or more. Okay, protic. What do we think protic? What's that? Protein? Uh, protons. So that's what, two or more protons. So protic would be two or more protons. Okay, so what's an acid? Donates. So it donates. So a polyprotic acid is an acid that can donate two or more protons. So it has nothing to do with birds. A lot of proteins could be polyprotic. A lot of acid side chains. All right, so one very important polyprotic acid that we, I don't know about very important, yeah, very important uh, polyprotic acid that we've been uh, already been talking about and using is H. 2SO4. So for acids, we're always going to write out that uh, H out front. And usually, if it has more than one H out front, it's probably going to be polyprotic. Okay? So other examples would be like phosphoric acid, H3PO4. Oxalic acid, which you'll use in the lab on uh, Thursday. Get excited, H2C2O4. Okay. Whereas something like acetic acid, we would write like this, HC2H3O2. Notice that we're putting other protons away from that bleeding edge. Okay? So when you're just having that one out front, that's what we call a monoprotic. It just has one proton. So acetic acid is monoprotic. And you can even use more uh, prefixes if you want. You can say sulfuric acid is diprotic, phosphoric is triprotic, or just clean it all up, put them all in one bag as polyprotic. All right, so that's the definition. And then a little bit more um, information on conceptually, it turns out that when they donate those two or more protons, they don't do so all at the same time. It's not like they donate all two or all three or all four at the same time. It happens sequentially. sequentially. So it turns out there's a bunch of different chemistry that occurs. Right? So here's what uh, happens with sulfuric acid. All right, so here's uh, the Lewis structure for sulfuric acid. Remember sulfate in sulfuric acid broke the octet rule, broke our hearts in the process. But that's what it is. Okay. All right, so you can see that there are these hydrogens are bonded to four oxygens, and sulfur is not too shabby in terms of electronegativity. Uh, so it's 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 definitely going to be uh, an acid because of that number of oxygen atoms that it's bonded to. And initially, both of those protons, both of those protons bonded to them are the exact same. Okay? Chemically, they're exact, chemically, they're exactly the same thing. They're bonded in the same manner. So they're both going to have a very weak bond because of the number of oxygen atoms they're bonded to in that group. And so we already know it's going to be strong. <coughs> so that first uh, proton that is donated, and it doesn't really matter which one, gets donated. It's strong, 100%, all coming off, all getting donated. That's going to make our hydronium. Okay. 
and what's left? The anion HSO4 minus hydrogen sulfate. So hydrogen sulfate, because sulfuric acid is a strong acid, hydrogen sulfate is not a, it's not a base. Okay? Not going back. No going back. Okay? No going back. Wrong way. Okay? It's, my, it's right going my way. Wrong going your way. All right? All right, but it turns out it's diprotic. So the hydrogen sulfate, it can donate that proton. So here is that uh, hydrogen sulfate polyatomic ion now. Here's its Lewis structure. Now after it donates that proton, of course it's negative. That oxygen got that extra electron. <laughs> so it can still donate it because this hydrogen bonded to this SO4- minus group is still acidic, meaning that bond is still going to be weak, but it's not going to be as weak as the bond it once was, okay? because it already donated one proton, and after it donates that proton, it gets the electrons from that bond. That's why it's now negative. Okay? And so it turns out this ion, or that group attached to that bond, a hydrogen in that ion is not going to be as electronegative as sulfuric acid, as the group in sulfuric acid. And so the way I kind of uh, um, internalize this is that what's electronegative means? Okay, so electronegative. So one way to think about electronegative atoms or electronegative groups is that they're, <coughs> they're negative in electrons. They're deficient in electrons. They want more electrons. That's why they're so attracted to them. After sulfuric acid donates that proton, it's got some extra electrons. It just got some extra electrons. So essentially, its electronegativity goes down because it's got extra electrons. And so if its electronegativity goes down, what happens to this bond between hydrogen and these, these atoms? If the electronegativity goes down, the bond actually gets stronger. The more electronegative this group is, the weaker that bond, the stronger the acid. Uh, but since now it's uh, less electronegative, that bond is stronger, it's going to be a weaker acid. <coughs> uh, excuse, oh, excuse me. I'm going to have to edit this out. <coughs> so weak, in fact, all right, that bond is uh, much stronger, so the acid is weaker, weaker enough that it actually sets up equilibrium. It's a weak acid. Hydrogen sulfate is weak acid. Still going to donate. Still going to make hydronium, and after it's donated, it makes sulfate, 2 minus. So every time these polyprotic uh, acids donate a proton, their acid strength goes down because they're keeping the electrons after they donate a proton. And so the electronegativity goes down, the acids get weaker and weaker and weaker. <coughs> Sulfuric acid is a good example because it starts out as a strong acid and then immediately becomes a weak acid after it donates that first proton. And you could possibly see that here. And I say possibly because I know these numbers are going to be pretty small. But they're in your book, you can look them up. Okay? So sulfuric acid is at the top. It goes from a strong acid, it's Ka, it's first Ka, it doesn't even have one, it's strong. Second time, it's the other, the second proton does have a K, 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. Oxalic acid, diprotic, just like sulfuric acid, but both of the protons are weak because there's just not as many um, oxygen atoms in that electronegative group. So the first one, 6.02 times 10 to the negative 2, but then again, after it donates, the second proton is going to be weaker, 6.1 times 10 to the negative 5th. And you can see each successive Ka for the acids gets smaller. Okay, citric acid. Who doesn't like some citric acid? 7.1, 7.4 times 10 to negative 4, 10 to negative 5, 10 to negative 7. And it's triprotic. 
ascorbic acid. Okay, that's the uh, chemical name for uh, vitamin C. So that's vitamin C that you uh, need. And it's diprotic. Each uh, time uh, it donates, it gets weaker and weaker. And then, of course, everyone sees the big lie. The big lie. Sulfurous acid doesn't exist. There is a solution that we call sulfurous acid. It definitely has, has two KAs, but they're from two, two different things. Can't believe the lies that get told in schools these days. All right, so let's summarize that. So uh, each, that's not how you spell each, uh, K-A, that's still not how you spell it. I was thinking of K-A, each K-A, so I just got trying to put the K in there. Each, there we go, nailed it. Third try. Gets smaller. Because each acid is weaker.